So you want to know how safe is prostate cancer surgery? Well, in this video, you're going to learn all about prostate cancer surgery and whether or not it is safe. Welcome to Health Drum. I'm Dr. Bert Vorstman, a urological surgeon and former researcher. And this channel is all about routine medical conditions, self-care and digital health so you can be informed and in control of your medical needs. If this is your first time on the channel and you like to get fact-based healthcare information, please hit the subscribe button for me. By the way, the material in Health Drum is for educational and informational purposes only and not a substitute for professional medical advice. The links to the disclaimer and the material in this video are in the description below. Okay, so let's get into it and start sorting fact from fiction. So in order for a treatment to be safe and effective, it should be scientifically proven to be safe and effective. And the standard of care label is not going to do it. In fact, that standard of care label for most treatments is absolutely meaningless. So let's see if prostate cancer surgery has been scientifically proven to be safe and effective. So the references to the material are in the description below and you can read the original paper about open prostate cancer surgery for yourself. Now, despite Young's claims about prostate cancer and early diagnosis and radical cure, and that the procedure that he performed was simple, effective, and that the functional results were satisfactory, turns out to be a barefaced lie. In stark contrast, in the body of the paper, there was no evidence for early diagnosis or radical cure, and the procedure was neither simple or effective, and the results were disastrous. Yet despite Young's disastrous results with his prostate cancer surgery, many other urologists chose to continue human experimentation and try to perfect the technique. Now, despite the many downsides associated with open prostate cancer surgery, surgeons continued human experimentation to try and improve the technique and lessen the complication rate. They tried various approaches to the prostate from behind the scrotum to above the pubic bone. They designed several techniques to control hemorrhaging, worked on other techniques to control urinary incontinence or leaking, and methods to combat impotence or erectile dysfunction. They also tried to prevent other common complications such as bladder neck contracture and urethral strictures. Yet, despite the many ongoing complications with prostate cancer surgery, they decided to call this open prostate cancer surgery standard of care. Yet, there was no scientific evidence that open prostate cancer surgery was safe or effective. What about robotic prostate cancer surgery? Has that ever been scientifically proven to be safe and effective? So robotic prostate cancer surgery has a bit of a history and you can read about it in the references listed in the description below. The robotic device was originally tested in Mexico for robotic gallbladder surgery because the rules for testing new devices were less rigorous than in the US. However, after the low-level clinical trial, there were no clear benefits for using the robotic device for gallbladder surgery. But despite the lack of benefits, it was still FDA approved because of potential future enhancements to surgery. Eventually, the device makers found that there was no market for robotic gallbladder surgery, so the company had to search for another disease to use their tool. Eventually, the device makers found urologists who were still believers in cutting out the prostate cancer. And when the company and urologists realized that cutting out the prostate was possible, they employed the FDA's 510K fallacious approval system to get the robotic device approved for robotic prostatectomy, again, without any testing for safety or benefits. And despite the lack of data for safety and benefits for robotic assisted prostatectomy, this procedure was also labeled like open prostatectomy standard of care. Yet, despite labeling open and robotic prostatectomies as standard of care, physicians were concerned about the complication rate and put some programs in place to manage patient expectations. Let's look. 
Now, because physicians were aware of the many complications associated with both open and robotic prostate cancer surgery, they designed several programs to manage patient expectations, starting with detailed informed consents and shared decision-making material, as well as pre-operative counseling, post-operative counseling, and post-operative rehabilitation programs to combat limp and leaking complications. Now, because both open and robotic prostate cancer surgeries have never been scientifically proven to be safe and effective, and the patient expectation programs were not entirely effective, complications remained. So let's review the many complications associated with these procedures. There are a host of general surgical risks associated with prostate cancer surgery, such as bleeding, deaths within 30 days, thromboses and pulmonary emboli, rectal tears, lymphocytes, pelvic nerve injury, depression, and suicide. And despite the many claims about how robotic prostate cancer surgery was minimally invasive and had short hospital stays, there were a number of injuries due to trocar access, gas insufflation, and patient positioning, as well as all the other general surgical complications just listed. So let's move on to all the penile injuries that resulted from prostate cancer surgery. So there's a whole bunch of risks and injuries to the penis as a consequence of radical prostate cancer surgery, both open and robotic. These included loss of libido, loss of manhood, and partial or complete loss of erections, lack of ejaculation, or ejaculating urine. Also possible was penile pain, pain on orgasm, shortened penis, penile wasting, penile numbness, curvature of the penis, pain in the testicle, and infertility. Okay, so let's move on and check bladder injuries as a consequence of this prostate cancer surgery. As well, there were a bunch of risks to bladder function with urinary incontinence or leakage, bladder neck scarring, urethral strictures, recurrent urinary tract infections, and bladder stones to list a few. But there were even bigger problems with this surgery in terms of removing the cancer. Both open and robotic prostatectomy fail as cancer operations because they have a high rate of positive margins or residual cancer in at least 11 to 48% of subjects. And there's a high biochemical recurrence rate in some 20 to 40% of subjects after 10 years of follow-up. A biochemical recurrence means that the PSA is rising because of some prostate cancer cells somewhere that they have yet to detect. However, eventually, obvious metastatic disease will be detected in those with a biochemical recurrence. So both open and robotic prostatectomy are associated with probably more potential surgical complications than any other procedure. What sort of treatments are available for these many complications? There are a variety of possibilities for treating erectile dysfunction or impotence, from medications to suction devices to vibration or shockwave treatments to prostaglandin injections into the penis and penile implants. With respect to the penile implants or prostheses, these can fail and will require surgical repair or replacement at extra cost and inconvenience. What about treatments for bladder complications after prostate cancer surgery? So bladder leakage was very common after prostate cancer surgery to varying degrees. It often required treatment with pads, penile clamps or catheters, and there were other options such as biofeedback, electrical stimulation devices, bulking sphincter injections, slings and artificial sphincters or prostheses. Those that had artificial sphincters inserted often experienced failures which needed repair at extra cost. In my experience, men commonly tried to downplay their complications after prostate cancer surgery and if you sent the patient out of the room and then asked the wife or partner the same question, they would give you an entirely different story about what the patient was dealing with. The regret level for prostate cancer surgery was significant. 
So how are positive margins or biochemical recurrences treated after prostate cancer surgery? So whether it's open prostate cancer surgery or robotic, both are associated with a high incidence of positive margins or residual cancer and biochemical recurrence. Positive margins are usually treated with post-operative radiation, but we already know that radiation treatment fails to save significant numbers of lives. On the other hand, biochemical recurrences are usually monitored for a while, and then if the PSA level becomes significant, intermittent androgen deprivation therapy is usually started. So is there any scientific evidence that either open or robotic prostate cancer surgery extends life. So neither open or robotic prostate cancer surgery was ever proven to be safe and effective. What about evidence for life extension? Well, at 15 years, no treatment had similar survival rates to those that had surgery or radiation. However, those that had no treatment not only did they have similar survival rates to those that had surgery or radiation, but they had none of the complications that are commonly associated with radiation or surgery. Again, the references to this material are in the description below. So neither open or robotic prostate cancer surgery has ever been shown to be safe and effective. Both procedures are associated with a huge list of potential complications. Neither of these procedures have been proven to extend life. How do physicians deal with that? So despite the absence of irrefutable and reproducible evidence for safety and benefits of either open or robotic prostate cancer surgery, urologists have labeled these procedures as standard of care, included them in their medical guidelines, talk about selecting ideal candidates and promoting the procedure in prostate cancer screening and in prostate cancer awareness. So let's recap. In this video, how safe is prostate cancer surgery? You learned that prostate cancer surgery, whether open or robotic, has never been scientifically proven to be safe or effective. It's associated with a high rate of complications and there's no scientific evidence at 15 years that it extends life. To learn more about routine medical conditions, self-care and digital health, check out these other videos.